All right, let me officially start the presentation now. I want to talk about time management for online students. And this is actually something I used to teach to online faculty as well, because believe it or not, teachers have the same problems as students in terms of getting used to working in the online environment. So these apply to us as well as to you, but I don't think anybody ever gets trained about this before they get thrown into an online environment. So here are some tips that go back quite a ways, but are still good. The first thing I would mention is that procrastination throughout the research is the number one enemy of online students. And it's strange because online content is always available. So if you woke up at four in the morning and decided you wanted to work on your math class, your math class is sitting there. So because it's always available, there's a feeling that we can always come back to it. Well, coming back to it is another way of saying putting it off until later. And it's that putting it off, which is what procrastination means, is what gets to people in the end. Yes, I'd much rather be playing video games than reading a book myself. I would like to get this new Guardians of the Galaxy game that's coming out, but I know that I got to get my work done first, so I'm willing to put that off. Some research tells us that 80 to 95 percent of college students put put off their work. And have been heard to say I work best under pressure. Now, is that really true? Do we really work better when we have a deadline that's staring us in the face? As I saw at the end of the last grading period, there were a lot of students furiously trying to get their work turned in before three o'clock a week ago Friday, because that was when the term officially ended and suddenly they want to have uh, exams opened and they want to get their papers graded that should have been done over the preceding eight weeks. Do you really think that people were going to do as well on their tests or as well on their papers when they were trying to shove nine weeks worth of work into nine hours? Probably not. But just think about the rest of your life. Does putting yourself under pressure do better for you in other things? If the movie starts at seven o'clock and you don't leave the house until 655, are you going to feel stress from driving and trying to get there and get your ticket and find a parking space and get your snacks and get in before the movie actually starts? you probably will be breathing hard even though you weren't pushing the car, it was doing all the work, but the stress will get your heart rate and breathing rate up. If somebody is coming over and you're going to go out, do you start getting ready five minutes before they're supposed to arrive? Probably not. If it's lunchtime and you start making something to eat, five minutes before lunch, or if you miss your alarm clock and you're on your way to regular school and you're about to miss the bus and you're thinking, I didn't have a chance to make a lunch or do my homework or whatever, we're creating negative stress for ourselves by not having worked backwards from when the thing actually had to happen and counting out a timeline. So if you wouldn't do that before going out for a date or a movie or a job or anything like that, why would we do it to ourselves over our schoolwork? We know that creating more pressure will probably create lower performance. Another thing that we know, especially since last year when students were suddenly put in an online environment, is that there were more emotional consequences. Feelings of isolation, depression, stress, 
anxiety, feeling like you're doing this all by yourself and you don't have your friends at school to help you study and things like that. So why would we create more problems for ourselves when we could do a better job of planning our work and actually doing it more easily and probably to a higher quality? Because what happens when you run out of time? You cut corners, you skip things, you don't spend as much time checking your work before you turn it in. So if you only give yourself one chance to answer a math problem and you don't have a chance to check your work, you might have made a simple process error and wind up getting that problem wrong. So we get nothing but negative consequences from putting ourselves in a jam over time. And an author that I've liked for a long time wrote a book called The Time Trap, and it has been reprinted and republished and revised many, many times because his basic ideas are still good. The things that work for us in managing our time in business also work for us in managing our time in school. And right now, really, your full-time main job is being a high school student. So if we take a little bit of a business-like frame of mind, we can use some of these ideas to do better at school. It doesn't mean that we become some clockwork machine, some kind of robot. One of his pieces of advice is be ruthless with time, but gracious with people. If you think about it, like back when we were on a regular campus. If all your work is done and caught up and you show up for class ready, then you have time to talk to your friends or visit with the teacher or just relax before the bell rings. It's when you show up for class and you still need to write up something that needs to be turned in or you can't find your book or whatever it is that makes you unprepared, then you don't have time to talk to your friends. You don't have time to relax and be sociable. So the stronger we are about managing our time and activities, we really create more time for getting along with our friends and seeing people and being more social. So being a good time manager doesn't mean that you have to be a rude, harsh person. But I can give you some specific tips from this book. And since Huckleberry Finn is in these nine weeks, I thought I would use a Huckleberry Finn rafting picture to illustrate the little mnemonic to help you remember these four tips. So R-A-F-T, the idea of a raft, will help you remember this author's four tips about time management. And he says that you should refer, act, file, or trash whatever is put in front of you. Primarily, we're going to talk about emails and online messages, but this would be the same thing if you were getting physical mail. This would be the same thing if it was just chores around the house. So the idea applies to all kinds of situations, but let's try and remember refer, act, file, trash, R-A-F-T, the idea of being on a raft, okay? So when would you refer something? When it's not for you. It may be that you receive something in your email inbox and a parent needs to sign it or fill out a survey or something like that. Well, that's not for you to do, but get it to whoever needs to take care of it as soon as possible so that they can manage their time effectively and do this form or answer this survey, whatever is necessary. But you're getting it off of your desk and onto the desk of the person who needs to do it. So if it's definitely not for you, get it to who can make use of it. 
If it is for you, go ahead and do it now and get it over with. So if it's a survey that you have to answer, or if it's a question that's being asked of you, or if you recall back at the start of the term, I sent everybody invitations to join the Canvas website where I post the recordings of these lectures. So if you get something like that, hit the button, register and get it over with, and then it's done. It's nice to have it out of your inbox. It's nice to have it off of your mind, and it feels awfully good to check it off your to-do list, which I will come back to later. But if you have the chance to just handle something and get it over with, do that. The more that you can get rid of these small activities, the more time you have saved for your bigger ones, like when you have to write an essay or when you have to study for a test and you would like to have more time at your disposal. File it. If it's for you but it's not immediate, put it in a folder. And this is something that I strongly advocate that if you are doing a good job of checking your school email inbox, it wouldn't be a bad idea to create folders for each of your courses so that you have an English folder and a history folder and a science folder, whatever courses that you're taking. So that if you need to refer to a schedule or there was a handout that was useful, then you have a folder to put it in and you're not going through a thousand things in your inbox trying to find that study guide from Earth Science. It's in the Earth Science folder. If it's something that has to be done by some certain date, you can put a flag on it and match that deadline. For example, twice a month, we're responsible for turning in our timesheets so the teachers get paid. I always made my deadline for that the day before it was due. Just in case I was out sick or out of town at a meeting or something, I wanted to make sure that I turned in my paperwork for payday. So I would put a flag on it a day early, just in case something happened. I mean, we don't know if we have bad weather and the internet goes down, and then all those things that we were supposed to do today I could have done them yesterday when it was good weather. So making deadlines and making folders can be good ways for you to file things that you need to work on later, but are not immediately necessary. If it's not for you and you see no future need for it, just erase it. Just get it gone. That way it's not in your way. I have a big recycling basket out by my garbage cans. So all these catalogs and free newspapers and magazines and things, sometimes I put them in the recycling bin before I even bring them in the house. I can tell that I don't need that or I'm not going to go shopping for a new car or whatever it is. I can put that straight in the trash. I don't need to fool with it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it away. A nice thing that you can uh, keep in mind about your trash folder in your email is that you might also consider the option of archiving because you're not sure whether you need to get rid of it or not. You can archive it so you can open it back up and look at it again later if it turns out that you did need it. Keeps you from making a permanent decision. I think my trash folder is set to automatically empty itself after 30 days. So if in a month I haven't found a use for what I put in the trash, it's going to evaporate. So maybe that's something to think about. When you put things in the trash, be aware that eventually they're going to go away and not be recoverable. It's as if the garbage truck has come and got them. So. I would consider trash to be for sure I don't need it. If it's something I think I might need, then I might folder it or archive it so I could find it again later. 
So let's put some of this stuff in action. One way or another, you have to have some way of keeping track of what your tasks are, what you might have to do. I don't care if you use a paper calendar. I don't care if you use the calendar and task features in the email program. When I had to have an apartment out of town for work, I had a dry erase calendar pinned to the wall in the laundry room so I could mark where I was traveling and when I needed to go and when I would be getting back. So whatever system works for you is OK with me. But just because we don't meet for English nine o'clock every day doesn't mean that you can't decide that you want to work on English a little bit nine o'clock every day. So you can actually make yourself a class schedule to give yourself some goals on when you want to work on your different subjects. So you can just write in there, OK, I'm going to do English first because I think English is the most important and I want you to do my class first. But then you're going to have some math to do and you might have some history to do. And if color coding helps you see those things differently, that's great. Again, make whatever system works for you. But maybe there's a live lesson in math that you can go to in the afternoon, so you want to make sure you write that down for today. But there may be things that you're not going to do today, but you want to make a note. I got a DBA that I'm going to do on Thursday. Because you don't want to flip to Thursday and see nine o'clock you were supposed to be doing something and oops, it's 930 when you looked at your schedule. So we call this having some suspense where you're suspending things that are going to happen a few days from now, but you don't want to lose sight of them. Personally, I find this will get me if something happens first thing next month because I use a wall calendar and something that happens November 2nd is not going to be showing to me on the October wall calendar. So I have to be aware of things that happen on the transition from one month to the next. That's just a personal thing for me, but I have a system for how I keep up with it. I put a post-it note on the next month so there's a little flag sticking out to remind me there's something that's going to happen that I can't see in October. Whatever works for you, do something. And then I think we'll find a human natural instinct. When we cross something off of our to do list. Oh, that feels good and we can breathe because one of our things now is no longer bothering us. I have actually known people and worked with people who will add something to their to do list that wasn't originally on it just so they can cross it off to get that nice feeling of having finished something. That's a little bit more than what I would do, but I know that it's out there. So in whatever fashion, have a system for keeping up with what you need to do and work your system. The people that don't come up with a system are the ones that are going to pile up with me right before Christmas. Wanting to get all of their exams opened up at the last minute. If you have a system that allows you to tick off a little bit of work every day. You're going to find yourself much more relaxed. You're going to be able to enjoy your sleep. You're going to be able to watch something on TV or to be able to enjoy talking to your friends because the pressure of your school day has been let off because you are taking care of a little bit of it as you go along. And we could all use some relief and comfort in our lives these days. And here's a way that you can give yourself some. Any questions about what I covered or any of those tips or ideas that you might be using or that you have a question about? Um, not at all. I actually like the schedules because I actually have one up right in front of me and I was just laughing how you said 
you check stuff off and you feel good after. That's how I feel when I get overwhelmed with work and I just check them off. Because that, that's like one thing that's just done. Yeah, you're getting rid of your own worries. And as long as it's in the back of your mind, it's hard to watch a movie when you know you've got an essay to write. Because you can't keep your mind fully on the movie because you know you have that job that you have to do. But if you cross off that job, yeah, put on the movie because I don't have anything else to do today. I also think, and this is a personal preference, but if I have several classes that have writing involved with them. So if I got to write in my English class and I got to write in my history class, I might work on my math or my science in between just so that I have something different to look at, something different to think about. I can use a different part of my brain. I want to mix it up so that mentally I get a little bit refreshed in between. And just as you would on a campus, I would leave myself five or ten minutes before changing subjects so that you get up, you walk around, you go get a drink of water, you take a look outside, and you refresh your brain before you start a new subject. You would do that in real life, so find ways to do that for yourself online. I think that's very useful. Any other questions or comments? Um, this was a really good lesson. I enjoyed it. Well, I'm going to get the video processed. I appreciate you saying that. And then I'll get the recording posted this afternoon and send everybody the link to it. The, these are just the kinds of things that I think could help anybody anytime. Someday when you get a job and you learn how to think like this, it'll help you at work. Yes, sir. I agree. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording and shut us down for that for today. And then we'll talk again next week. Bye-bye. Oh, okay, have a good day.